Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to uh, present you a couple of problems um, related to systems of trigonometric equations. Um, as usually, my recommendation is try to solve these problems yourself first before you listen to this lecture. Um, now, as you know, I'm trying to position this course as the one which develops your mind, your creativity, your analytical abilities, etc. And it's the process of thinking about something that's what actually develops your mind in as much as exercise in the gym develops your muscles. So try to think. I mean, that, that's the only recommendation which I, which I have. If you listen to the lecture without previous uh, thinking about the problem, that's just not even 10% of, of the work of the work which you would like actually to, to, to get um, for your for your mind for your abilities so it's very important uh, think about these problems first doesn't really matter whether you solve them or not yourself uh, it's important to spend time and think about how to solve them um, and by the way there are certain problems uh, which, which I present in, in this course uh, as examination problems, and I don't provide these lectures with, with answers. Uh, these are just multiple choice um, uh, answers which you have to choose, and just plain guessing will never give you the perfect score. And it's a perfect score on the exam, which means all problems must be solved correctly. That's what your goal is. Okay, without further ado, I have two problems. One is well, actually, both seem to be easy. However, in both, um, there is certain um, trick or, or carefulness, if you wish, uh, which you would like to exercise. Okay, one uh, looks very simple. Sine x, sine y equals a, cosine x, cosine y equals b. So that's the system. Two variables, x and y and two equations. This is the system. Now, um, I don't know about you, but um, looking at this, I immediately see the formula for uh, uh, cosine of a sum of two angles and uh, cosine of a difference of two angles. So cosine of um, x plus y equals cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y and cosine of x minus y equals cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. Now, what does it mean in our case? Well, I have the product of the cosines and I have a product of the sines, which means immediately I can conclude that cosine of x plus y is equal to uh, product of cosines minus product of sines, which is b minus a, and cosine of x minus y equals uh, a plus b. Transformation from here to here is invariant, which means it doesn't uh, add additional solutions and doesn't lose any solutions because this is invariant transformation. Okay, so I have this system. Now, is it easier? Of course it is easier, because it actually falls into something like cosine phi is equal to whatever, p, for instance. And we know the solution to this, um, and it's already actually addressed in, in, in the previous lectures, is that the angle phi is equal to plus minus arc cosine of p plus 2 pi n, where n is any integer. So from here, using this, we can derive the following. x plus y equals plus minus arc cosine of b minus a plus 2 pi n. And 
x minus y is equal to plus minus arc cosine a plus b plus 2 pi m. I use a different integer because it's completely uh, different things, and we might actually use different integer, not necessarily the same. So in this case, I can add, for instance, 0, and in this case, 1, and it will be a solution. Or in this case, minus 3, and in this case, plus 5. That's the solution. All right, so that's what I have. Well, now, this seems to be like a, a system of two linear equations with two variables, which is very um, simple to solve. Um, however, let's be very careful about uh, plus or minus in this case, and m and n in this case. Um, I would like to address them, um, how should I say it, very carefully. <laughs> Um, let me do it this way. Since x plus y can be anything from this, let me just represent it in two cases separately. Arc cosine b minus a plus 2 pi n, or it can be minus arc cosine of b minus a plus 2 pi n. And x minus y can be uh, plus arc cosine of a plus b plus 2 pi n, or it can be minus arc cosine of a plus b plus 2 pi n. Now, these two cases, in, two, in these two cases, they actually should be combined into system. So, can I have plus here and minus here? Yes. Minus here and plus here? Yes. Plus and plus? Yes. Minus and minus? Yes. So, it's four different systems I have. And four different uh, solutions, and each solution is not actually a single solution because there is this integer n or m which should be added. So, let me just as one particular example, um, like one case, the case number one, I'll, I'll consider first and first, which is um, x, my, x plus y is equal to this and x minus y is equal to this, from which I can conclude by adding these two, y and y will be reduced, um, would be, it will be 2x here, so x is equal to 1 half of arc cosine b minus a plus arc cosine of a plus b uh, plus, well, um, pi times m plus n. And y is equal to one half. I have to subtract from this, I subtract this, so x and x will be reduced and will be 2y. So that's why 1 half here. So it would be arc cosine b minus a minus arc cosine of a plus b. And from this I will subtract and it will be n minus n. So b and a are constant, so there is no problem with this. Now, this is many pairs of solutions where m and n are any integer numbers. Now, um, it's actually natural to think that, hey, if m and n are any integer numbers, can I just replace m plus n as, as k and say, and, m, and n minus m as l, and say that k and l are anything, any integer numbers? Well, not exactly, because look at these. You see, x plus y should give me something which is multiple by 2 pi. And these two always give me something which is multiple by 2 pi. For instance, if I add them together, I will have 2n. If I subtract them, it would be uh, 2n, right? So k and l also must be of that particular property. If I sum them together, they must be 
uh, even. So I will have 2 pi here. Because if I will have, for instance, 0 and 1, so uh, I will have 0 here and, and pi here, and, uh, and my sum would be uh, sum of these, my sum would be like arc, arc cosine of this, because arc cosine of a plus b will, will be reduced, will be plus 2 uh, plus pi, just plus pi, right? Because k is equal to 0, l is equal to, to, to 1, it will be plus pi. And that is not right, because the period of the cosine is 2 pi, not pi. So if my cosine of x plus y is equal to b minus a, uh, I cannot have pi multiplied by something, or like, like 1, for instance. I, I have to have 2 pi by something. So k and l can be replaced m plus n and n minus l with uh, integers k and l. However, there is one particular requirement. Their sum and their difference must be even, which means either they're both even or they're both odd. So any way you would like to express this, either with m and n saying m and n are any integer numbers, or you can say pi k and pi l, but then the condition is that both k and l should be either both odd or both uh, even. So their sum and their difference is always even. Okay? So that's the little twist which you have to really think about it. Now, <clears throat> now I can, exactly in the same fashion, I can have the second choice. If I will have, let's say, plus here and minus here and you will see exactly the same type of um, manipulations. Uh, well, let me just do it, just one. Uh, so it's this and this, right? So their sum would have a minus. So x is equal to 1 half arc cosine b minus a minus arc cosine a plus b plus pi m minus m, uh, actually m plus m, because I'm summarizing, yes, I'm summarizing. And, so let me wipe this out so it doesn't confuse. And uh, y is equal to, if I subtract, it would be sum. So one half arc cosine b minus a plus arc cosine of a plus b plus p uh, plus pi mm, n minus m. So basically, I exchange the x and y. And um, looking at the original system, uh, original system you remember, right? Sine x, sine y is equal to a, cosine x, cosine y is equal to b. Obviously, if I change x and y, uh, mm, values, it will be exactly the same thing because it's symmetrical relative to x and y. So I should expect actually that if pair x, y is a solution, then the opposite, y takes the value of x and x takes the value of y, is also a solution. And, uh, and then other two solutions, when I have minus here and plus here, similarly, it would be minus here and, and, and either plus here or minus here doesn't really matter. So these four different formulas, 1, 2, and then 3 and 4 would be with minus here, um, they represent four different sets of solutions, and sets because m and n can be any integer numbers, which would actually go through all that. that these four formulas, each of them uh, represents a set of solutions, represent a complete set of solutions to this particular system of equations. All right? Well, that's it. Now, um, in the beginning, it was simple. I just recognized the cosine and, and uh, the cosine of sum and cosine of, of difference. But then, at the very end, you really have to be very careful with these cases. That, that's, what, that, that's what probably very important. So sometimes there is an easy solution, but you really have to watch every step so you don't lose anything or you don't add anything, etc. And the next problem would be even more educational in this particular um, way.
Okay. This is a system of three equations. with three unknown variables. Okay. Now, what actually um, I was thinking about um, examining this particular system is, um, hey, it would be nice if I can express tangent of three, uh, of sum of three angles in terms of tangents of each angle. Then I will have only tangents, uh, which means I can uh, replace tangent of x with some variable, tangent of y with some var variable, and tangent of z uh, with some variable, and have another system of three equations with three variables, but it, it's not trigonometric equations anymore. So these will be just a regular algebraic system of three um, equations with three variables. But obviously I don't remember, I don't know the formula uh, tangent of three, the uh, sum of three angles. I do remember for two, and I do remember that tangent of sum of two angles is expressed in the tangent, in the terms of tangent of each one, right? So you remember this. So tangent of phi plus uh, psi is equal to tangent of phi plus tangent of psi divided by 1 minus tangent phi tangent psi. Right? This is the formula. And again, I do remember the formula of sum uh, of uh, two angles I do remember, actually, sine, cosine, tangent. Cotangent I don't, but it's very easy to, to, to derive. <coughs> Same thing with uh, uh, secant and cosecant. But I do remember sine, cosine, and tangent of sum of two angles. These formulas I do remember. So this is one of them. So if uh, the sum of two angles can be, tangent of sum of two angles can be expressed in terms of tangent of each one of them, then obviously I hope that the tangent of three angles uh, sum together also is expressed. But let me derive this formula. And obviously, that's just step by step. First two and then the third one. So, um, tangent of x plus y plus z equals. So, x plus y is one variable, right? One angle tangent of x plus y, and tangent z is another. 1 minus tangent x plus y, tangent z equals. Okay, now let's express tangent of x plus y in terms of tangent of x of, and tangent of uh, y. So I will have tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus their product. Plus tangent z divided by 1 minus, same thing here, tangent of x plus tangent of y over 1 minus tangent of x, tangent of y, times tangent of z, right? So what I will do is, in the numerator, I will multiply this by this, and it will be one longer numerator. In the numerator, I will have a fraction where numerator will be this plus this plus this multiply. Now, uh, and the denominator in the big numerator will be 1 minus product of tangents. Same thing here. Also, I will have, in the, de in the big denominator, I have, um, if I will multiply this uh, by this, and this by this, uh, I will have numerator, whatever I will have, and denominator 
1 minus product of tangents. And I will just drop both denominators, right? I will use only numerator from here and numerator from there, because denominators will be the same. So what will be the numerator in the, uh, in, in the top one? So it's tangent x. It's tangent x plus tangent y plus this 1 minus tangent by tangent multiplied by this. So it would be 1 by tangent, so it's plus tangent z. And it will be minus their product. Tangent x, tangent y, tangent z. That's my numerator. Now, what will be in the uh, denominator? So the numerator part of this thing. It's 1 minus this. 1 minus ta tangent by tangent times 1, right? So it's 1 minus tangent x, tangent y. Minus this times this, which is tangent x, tangent y, uh, z and minus again tangent y tangent z so that's my answer now as you see this is symmetrical uh, relative to x, y, and z right? we can, uh, add, uh, we can uh, transform them um, in any way we want and this is also symmetrical x, y, z, x, y, z and this is x, y, x, z, and y, z. So, looks like we have the right formula. Now, using this, let me just take the tangent of the last equation, and I will have tangent of x plus y plus z, and I can express it in this way. I will have minus 3 on the right, because tangent of arc tangent is, obviously, whatever the argument is, from definition of the arc tangent. And then I will have the three equations where only tangents of x, y, and z are present, right? So I can actually replace tangent x with a variable u, tangent y with a variable v, tangent z with a variable w, and I will have an algebraic system of equations relative to u, v, and w, because only tangents are present. However, and here is a very important twist which you really should not um, lose your, your, your focus from. Yes, x plus y plus z equals something. That's fine. But then I take the tangent of both sides. Is this an invariant transformation? So let me ask again. If p is equal to q, is tangent of p equivalent to tangent of q. Are these two invariant? Are these solutions exactly the same as these and these exactly the same as those? No. Why? Because the tangent is a periodic function and as we know we can add to this angle uh, q for instance. Pi k, and it will be exactly the same um, equality. So not only p is equal to q is the solution of this, but also p is equal to q plus p k, uh, pi k, right? Where k is any integer. So this thing is, has infinite number of solutions, right? So if p is a variable and q is a constant, let's say this is three. Then from this, we derive p is equal to 3 plus pi k, not just p equals to 3. So it's not invariant, which means that we, we have to be very careful at the very end when we will derive some kind of solutions to our system where after we have uh, taken tangent of both sides. We have to be very careful examining our solutions because we might introduce certain solutions which actually do not belong, right? So, keeping this in mind, 
I would still like to proceed with taking the tangents of both sides and replacing my variables with these new variable substitutions. So I will have u times w equals to 1, v times w equals to 1, right? Tangent of y is my new variable v, tangent of z is still w. And on the left, I have this thing, and it's equal to minus 3, right? Because I took tangent of both sides. So let me just put it, uh, which is u plus v plus w pl uh, minus u v w divided by 1 minus u v minus u z uh, w minus v w equals to minus 3. This is the system which we can attempt to solve, but this is algebraic, it's not uh, trigonomic, which I hope makes it simpler. Now let's see if we can solve it. Because if we can, then from u, v, and w, we'll just know how to derive x, y, and z from each of these guys, right? Okay, so um, what's my... Um, um, proposed plan to solve this particular system of equation. Well, let's, uh, considering u and v are kind of symmetrical in this particular case, in the entire system, right? I would uh, attempt to use um, w as a base variable, and I will express u in terms of w, v in terms of w, and substitute everything in the third, and then I will get only one equation with one w. Now, obviously, I have to think about what if my uh, denominator equals to zero, it means no solution, so I have to really um, uh, be careful about this as well. Uh, so there are a lot of things to be careful about this, right? So the last equation I actually um, uh, can rewrite as this uh, numerator is equal to minus three times denominator, right? So I can just multiply both sides by, by denominator to have a linear without any kind of fraction. So from this, I will have u is equal to 1 over w, v is equal to 1 over w. Again, I'm doing it kind of freely, but I have to really think about what if w is equal to 0, right? Is this a solution? Well, each one of these cases must be examined separately. What if w equals to 0? What if 1 minus u v minus u w minus v w equals to 0? So these are separate cases which I have to examine separately. Don't forget it. Even if I forget it when I'm presenting this lecture, you should, you, you, you should not. All right, so having these, I will substitute it into this um, equation. And what will I have? Well, let me just... Right, u is 1 over w, plus v is 1 over w, plus w, minus u times v, it's 1 over w squared, and w, so it will be 1 over w. Now, equals to minus 3 times denominator, which is 1 minus. Now, uv is... Uh, 1 over w squared, right? Minus uw, which is 1, right? And, and vw, which is 1 as well. So that's my equation. Now, um, let me just do some reduction here. This and this, right? Now, um, let me rewrite it. So on the left, I have 1 over w plus w. On the right, I have this minus and this minus and this minus. So it's basically 3 
over w square plus 3, right? Minus, minus, so it's 3 over w square, and minus, minus, plus 3. And now I will multiply it by w square, and I will get uh, w plus w cube equals 3 plus w square. I multiply everything by w. And I already kind of consider that this case should be separately. And let me rewrite it like real equation. w cube minus uh, uh, No, I think I made a mistake. It's 3W. Yes, it was 3W, so it's 3W, sorry. Um, minus... Double, uh, 3W squared. Minus plus w minus 3, right? Right, equals to 0. So w minus 3, w uh, cubed minus 3w, right. OK, now I have to solve this uh, equation of the third degree, right? So it's not such an easy thing. However, in this particular case, I immediately see a very important thing. If I will factor out w square from the first two, I will get w minus 3. And this is w, w minus 3. So it's equal to w square plus 1 times w minus 3 equals to 0, which means that either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. Now, this is not equal to 0 because it's square plus 1, right? Square is always non negative, plus 1 is always positive. So w is equal to, zero, uh, to 3 is my solution. And obviously, from here, uh, my u is equal to 1 third and my v is equal to 1 third. These are all solutions. Well, am I almost done? Well, look, I mean, if tangent of x is equal to 1 third, then x is equal to arc tangent of 1 third plus p uh, pi k. y is equal to arc tangent of v, which is 1 third as well, plus pi m. And z is equal to arc tangent of, of 3 plus pi n. Is that it? Well, unfortunately, no. Well, first of all, I did not check all these cases, remember? If w is equal to 0, well, w is not equal to 0, it's 3. How about 1 minus u v minus u w minus v uh, w? Is that is equal to 0? Uh, mm, I hope not. <laughs> so this is 1 third, and 1 third, 1 third, 3, and 1 third, 3 equals to, this is 1 minus 1 and this one, so it's minus 1 and 1, no, something like this. Okay, so that's good. Well, at least I did not, by multiplying by this, I did not introduce new solutions, which is good. 
So, so far, so good. However, there is one detail which I did mention before, and it, it should actually play a very important role right now. Remember this? When I took the tension to both sides, I was talking about the, this uh, as a non-invariant transformation. So, if k, m, and m are any integer numbers, obviously not all the numbers fit this particular equation, because arc tangent of minus 3 is always between minus pi over 2 uh, and pi over 2, without including the boundaries, right? So whenever we sum these together, k plus m plus n must be in such particular value that altogether it falls into this particular interval. Is it possible? Well, um, let's just think about it this way. Let me just make a, some kind of evaluation of the values. What is arctangent of one-third? Well, remember the function tangent looks like this, right? This is minus p over 2, this is pi over 2, this is 0, y, x. Now, tangent of uh, pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, tangent is uh, sine over cosine, it's equal to 1, right? So this is 1, and this is pi over 4. Right? Well, it's not exactly half of this distance. Let's make it a little bit better. This is pi over 4, and this is 1. All right? Now, so as the tangent, uh, as the, the angle increases, the tangent increases. The, 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 uh, the angle decreases, the tangent decreases to 0. So I need one third. So from one, I should go to somewhere here. So it's less than p over four, less than 45 degrees. By how much less, I don't know. But well, considering the tangent is you know diminishing in some way, well, maybe it's 20 degrees, maybe it's 10 degrees, something like this. Let's just assume, for argument's sake, that this is around 20 degrees, right? So this is around 20 degrees plus pi k. y is also about this. And z is... Now, 3 is somewhere here, right? If this is 1, this is 3. So it's greater than p over 4. And again, this is 45, this is 90. Uh, I don't know how it is. Maybe 80, approximately, right? I mean, it doesn't really matter... Um, whether I'm exactly uh, evaluating the value or, or, or really approximately. Can I choose uh, k, m, and n in such a way that the sum of these would be arctangent of minus 3? Now, what's arctangent of minus 3? That's somewhere here, right? So let's say it's minus 80 degree, something like this. Well, probably yes. I can put something like, um, I don't know, minus 3 here, or minus 2, for instance, here, and 1 and 1 here, and I will be somewhere close. So I think I can um, play with these numbers in such a way that their sum would be within this particular um, interval. Uh, again, being a little bit more precise with my evaluation, maybe I will have a calculator or something like this, I will definitely be able to find integer k, m, and n, which would satisfy this particular equation. And it's not just one triplet of k, m, and n, because I can increase one of them and decrease another, and that would be exactly the same thing. So basically what I'm saying is that there are a lot of solutions. They are expressed in this general formula with a condition that k, m, and n such be, uh, should be such that the sum of these three angles is within this particular interval somewhere.
Well, basically, that concludes um, the uh, full solution of this particular um, equation. So, what's important? I think it's very important to understand that taking the tangent of this particular equation is not an invariant transformation. Now, everything else, whatever we did, was, well, really some kind of technicality, I would say. Taking, for instance, deriving the formula for a tangent of three uh, different angles summed together, um, that was, you know, trivial, basically. I, I didn't know the formula, I just derived it on the fly. And then, when I had this um, converted into algebraic system of equations, uh, it was a little bit uh, maybe um, unusual to have the system which resulted in the equation of the third degree. Uh, but it was such an equation of the third degree where you very easily see the solution. So basically that was not, not something unusual. But I think the first one, that the tangent of both sides is not an invariant transformation, is very important for you to think about. What I would suggest uh, right now you is take these two problems and try to solve them yourselves. And again, think about what kind of solution you get, what kind of integer, k, m, n, whatever, in, in both cases, for, for both uh, the problems which I have presented. Um, what, what kind of values are allowed, what's important. Um, well, basically, that's it. Thank you very much, and I will try to put maybe some more uh, problems with uh, you know, some interesting twists, if I can. Uh, thanks, again, thanks again, and uh, and good luck. Good luck to you.